I want to take you someplace different today, and I, I want to show you something here. And uh, you try to follow along here what I'm doing. I'm going to draw a line that represents a kind of spiritual continuum here, okay? And this moment on that continuum represents the kind of moment a person steps across the line of faith. That's when hope begins to rise right here. But you could think of this as, a, let me do it up here, a kind of spiritual continuum. Like we'll call that negative 10, negative 7, maybe negative 3. And this kind of ground zero where a person steps across the line of faith. And as you become a Christ follower, you might have, you know, different levels of development. We'll call that 3 or plus 6 or plus 9, for example. And, you know, you think about, you can probably think of people you know in your life that are at different places along this continuum, can't you? You know, down here there's a name. I'll, I'll use some, some names. I'll call this like an antagonistic atheist if you're way down here by number 10. And we know some folks like that, right? There's like every, they're just, they got an axe to grind. And maybe in the middle here it's more like a indifferent agnostic. Do you know what the word agnostic means? It means, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. And indifferent means, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't really care. There's a lot of people in this category. It's one of the fastest growing religious groups in America right now is this indifferent agnostic. I don't know and I don't care. I don't see the relevance. Kind of an apatheist. And this one here is maybe closer, but, you know, they, they would be sort of curious, but cautious. Whoops. Let's put a U in there. But cautious. Because it's like, I don't know, Christians, I know some wacky Christians and some stuff I don't like about, I don't understand Christianity and there's a lot of stuff, it's hard to swallow, but I'm curious, there's, I, I've actually met some pretty interesting Christians and so you start to see these different, you know, whatever labels you put on it, you see that and then as you move here, you've got someone who's a, I'll call it a brand new believer, <laughs> baby Christian, they've stepped across the line of faith but they're kind of like, whoa, this is new and a little bit clueless about everything. And then, you know, maybe you've got someone here who's kind of a, a developing disciple. You know, they're, they're, they're growing, you know, and learning and maturing. And over here, you've got someone who's maybe a fairly mature follower. They really follow Jesus and so forth. That's why you can just think about this. I want to just highlight a couple things for you here. First of all, number one, when you look at this, there's so many interesting things to see here. But number one, everyone's on here somewhere. Every person you know is on that chart somewhere. Okay? They're, they're somewhere. Everybody has some kind of a relationship with God. It might be way back here and not much of one, or they may not think they have a relationship with God. That just means they're further down here. Or it might be, you know, up here. But everyone's on there somewhere. And right now in the place where we live, Stuff right, in, stuff right in here is growing. Because a lot of people used to kind of claim to be here, but they never really knew Jesus at all, and cultural Christianity is just not the cool thing anymore. So they're just kind of drifting that way. So everybody is on there somewhere. Number two, where you are is not where you need to stay. Where you are is not where you need to stay. If a person is right here... The goal isn't to sort of just get saved and stay there, but to keep growing and moving in that direction. And a person that's down here, they may say, this is just who I am and what I believe and where I am, but it's not where you need to say, stay. People change. Things change. Circumstances change. Prayer changes things. And God really hopes that you will move because, number three, God's heart longs to see everyone find hope. So wherever anyone is on this... God's hope, God's desire, God's ache is that everyone would find hope. That's why he sent his son to die on a cross to, to open up eternity and hope for every single person. And number four, God uses people to draw people toward that hope of his. That's how he does it. He sent his son, and then his son has said, now I'm sending you. Go fish for people, be the light of the world. 
God wants to use you and me to bring hope to someone. So it's important when you think about how God uses us, it's important for us to have relationships with people all along that continuum, isn't it? It's pretty important. Let me ask you a question as you look at this. Where did Jesus spend time with people? Which kind of people did he spend time with? What do you think the answer is? Here's where Jesus spent time. So if you're only spending time here, you don't look very much like Jesus. If you're only spending time here, you got some growing to do. If you're only spending time here, you're probably in trouble. But Jesus spent time with everyone, didn't he? Because God uses people to draw people. Here's something else important for you to understand is that location isn't as important as direction. Where you are, where a person is, is not nearly as important as the direction they're moving. And God's Holy Spirit blows this way. And if a person is right here and they're self-righteous and they think they're all that, but they're not moving toward Jesus, and a person is down here at negative 10, but they move an inch that way to negative 9.5, they're closer to the heart of God than the religious, self-righteous person over here. That's what Jesus teaches. So the direction is way more important than the location. And finally, you know what makes a difference as we think about what God wants to do is that conversations count. Conversations count. Because conversations are the way that we learn and grow and develop relationships, and it's the way people move on this continuum. Let me try to explain a little more what I mean when I say conversation counts, because it can, it can be the thing that helps a person take a step. So if you have a conversation with someone who's a negative seven, and as a result of that conversation and you just being transparent, being a friend, sharing hope, they move to negative six, that's a huge win in heaven and they have a party. They're not dancing full on yet because they're waiting for them to get up here. But you know what? We're, we're really good at celebrating this, but we've got to get really good at celebrating some of these moves here. And we've got to get better, mountain people, at having conversations. Because when you look at it that way, you realize conversations are about as important as conversions. Because without conversations, you don't have any conversions. You don't have anyone finding the hope of Christ. 